Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look at Beautybox Photo 4.0 and its added functionality within Adobe Lightroom for the first time ever. Beautybox is a skin retouching software plugin that uses some facial recognition software as well as some other algorithms to figure out where all the skin tones are located and create a mask that retouches all the blemishes that you see. And as you can also see, if I zoom in here, or maybe you were able to notice it even before I did, we have a, like, quite a bit of blemishes on the face of our model here um, that we're going to be touching up in our plugin. The easiest way to get to the plugin is just to right click the image that you're going to be editing, go to Edit In, and choose Beauty Box from the drop down menu that appears, or alternatively, I could just go up to Photo, Edit In, and find the same selection. So I'm just going to do that, which will open up our UI. Any file format, color space, or bit depth will work. So yeah, sure, let's go with TIFFs. We'll edit that, which will bring our photo into Beauty Box. And already you'll be able to see that a lot of skin smoothing has been applied. A lot of those blemishes, the scarring on the side of our model's face, a lot of that stuff has been mitigated by the plugin. One detail that is very important to note before I go any further into the parameters, which we'll be taking a look at in a bit, is the zoom. Now with all of our plugins as of right now, if you were to zoom to anything below 100%, you're going to get a slightly downsampled version of the original photograph. This one's okay since it was a relatively small PSD file, but if in the case of, say, dealing with raw photographs, you're going to want to zoom in to 100% or more to get a true interpretation of what the final output is going to be. And here, we're definitely safe. So with that being said, we're going to take a look at some of the parameters, the first of which are the smoothing controls, which are fairly self-explanatory. The smoothing amount and skin detail smoothing are determining how much of a blur is being applied to all the skin tones in the image. And the contrast enhance helps bring back some of the natural details in the face. So maybe I think this is a little, little heavy-handed for the plugin. In that case, I would maybe choose, I don't know, say um, about a value of 25 for the smoothing amount and skin detail smoothing is what I usually go to. Oops. And I like the boost up the contrast enhance maybe to about 50 or more. I'll actually go up to 100 in this case. So now we get a little more natural looking mask. I might even increase some of those parameters. And so here we have this nice balance. Our model has some slight retouching without boosting the parameters so much that we're getting this kind of plastic skin look. So this actually looks very even and nice. I like that. Okay. So with that done, I can go into the advanced mask controls now. Now the way that Beauty Box works, like I was mentioning before, is that it uses facial recognition and some other algorithms that look for what are typical flesh tones and creates a mask based on where those skin tones are in the image. If I turn on show mask, you'll be able to see the mask that Beauty Box created based on those algorithms. And all this is done automatically from the get-go. Another way that you could do it is set and add your skin tones. In that case, I can just show you what that's like. From here, after having selected set skin color, I can click on the image, which will select the first skin tone that we want included in our mask. If I want to add more skin tones to that mask, I can click add skin color and start selecting more of those maybe gray or black parts of the image. And as you can see, the mask is expanding to include more and more of her face. Now, you don't want to do too much. I think that was a little bit too much you were seeing, that I'm including a little too much of the hair, maybe. Um, I probably want to include a little bit of those blemishes that were on her neck. Again, that's too much. But actually, this works as a great example of how our advanced mask controls can help us refine where the mask is being selected. So hue, saturation, and value range are all parameters that I can tweak to have Beautybox include more of the frame in the mask, or in this case, less. So here I could probably take the hue range and bring it down just a tad. 
can see that that's doing a pretty decent job of unselecting some of that background. And maybe you could bring down the saturation. Not too much. And the value. So here you're seeing, especially we're getting rid of a lot of the hair that was selected before. While still including a decent size of the skin tones that we want selected. So with that done, I can click Show Mask. And that looks very pretty. Some additional things I can do to the photo, say I want to get rid of a lot of these highlights that are a little distracting to the image. I can actually go into our image controls and I can actually reduce a lot of those highlights by going into the remove shine parameter and boosting that. As you can see a lot of those highlights are a little more dulled. I can also use the mask as a reference, but in this case, I'm not sure if it would work so well since when you turn on the mask, you'll be able to see that those highlights are so bright that they're not even included as a flesh tone. So that's fine. Another thing I could do if, say, my model was too red, maybe they had something to drink, or they're just being photographed in a very warm room, I can actually go into the color correction controls, use the mask as my reference, and, and cool off my model by adjusting the hue just a tad. Maybe bring down the saturation a little bit as well to give it a little more natural look. Maybe adjust the brightness a little bit to give her a little bit lighter skin tone. What I can also do after having Adjusted all of our parameters here, I can go into the snapshots, select the, the, the first preset, and save this preset for later. And what's also great about Beautybox is that I can go ahead and click OK, and say I don't like the result in the end. I can actually go back to the original image, bring it back into Beautybox, and it will remember all the previous settings for all the parameters that we had before. So this is great if you want to do a batch render for a large list of photographs that you have to make your photo rendering go a lot faster. Additionally, we have a list of presets that you can use for all kinds of cool, fun looks, uh, whether it be something very, very stylized or maybe a little more subtle as well as stuff that is just fun and goofy. So, after all that's done, I can just output the photograph. And just to be able to do a little bit of back and forth to see the before and after, this is after with Beauty Box applied. And this is what it looked like before. So especially in her chest here and on the side of her face, you're seeing that all those blemishes you're able to take off a lot of the edge that was there before. So that's really it for all the basic controls and parameters in Beautybox. If you would like to check out Beautybox in Lightroom for yourself, you can go to digitalanarchy.com, where we have free trials of the software, as well as for all our other plugins. I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.